Hello everyone, my name is Kola Cavayas. I am going to present you a research work I did um, as part of my thesis subject. I am currently working at the Acoustics Laboratory of Le Mans in France. My study focuses on the active control of a brass instrument. Today I will talk about the parameters optimizing the active control. So let's first talk about the primary source. The trombone radiates a harmonic signal that can deliver up to 100 dBSPL for one harmonic at one meter. And as it is shown, the majority of the energy is contained in the 10 first harmonic of the signal. So the trombone is assumed to be omnidirectional up to 500 Hz and then become more and more directive. Actually, passive mutes are used to control the radiated sound of a trombone, is for, for example a cup mute, which is basically inserted inside the bell of the trombone. Uh, they are mainly used to attenuate or change the sonority made by the instrument. But we can see here that the input impedance of the instrument is impacted. So a classical mute shifts the input impedance of the instrument. The musician has therefore to adapt his way of playing. The simplified principle of active control is to capture the pressure radiated by the instrument with a sensor and then reproduce the opposite of this pressure with an actuator. In 1998, Piquet tries to make an external control with one loudspeaker, but the prototype can not be performed due to the high sound level required. So my work consists to try to make an external control like Piquet, but with several and light loudspeakers in order to control high sound levels without altering the musician playing. The last year, an experiment showed that the position of the point source radiated by the trombone depends on the intensity and the frequency of the note. But the main result is that an external control is efficient only in low frequency. The critical parameter of the efficiency over the frequency is the distance between the primary source and the control source. So my work consists to design an active mute that controls in the best way the radiated power or the directivity of the trombone. I will present you here the results of a theoretical study on the number and the position of control sources. To do so, it is first necessary to remind a bit of theory about the optimal control, which is evaluated by looking on the power of the system in our case. A boundary element method model is also built. The goal with this new model is to bring a more accurate model to analyze the power numerically and possibly find effect of diffraction. Then a parametric study is done, first on the power control and then on the directivity control of the system. So first, let's recall the optimal control theory. So for this model, I am using the trombone here as a point source, like the control sources placed here. To reduce the power or to change the directivity, the optimal volume velocity to apply to the control source is defined as QC equals B over A, which is basically an inverse matrix. A represents the real part of the transfer impedance matrix between the control sources, and B is defined by the transfer impedance vector between the primary source and the control sources times QP, which is the primary source volume velocity. The power of the system after a control is also defined with the transfer impedance matrices. Uh, the vector Q is defined with the primary source volume velocity and then the control source's optimal volume velocity. But the power calculation can be confirmed with a numerical model. This is one of the goals of the use of boundary element method here, calculate the power in the, with, of the system in another way. Now the geometry of the system is numerically taken into account. So the trombone and the speaker boxes are considered using the software ACAVAC. The way to calculate the optimal volume velocity is the same as previously, and it is possible to calculate the pressure in far field and so deduce the power with equation four. In this first figure, it shows the power attenuation when there are two control sources. The calculation is made with both methods present above, and for each case, the power attenuation is the same, efficient in low frequency until a limit at kh equal n pi, where the attenuation is nil, h being the distance between the primary and a control source. The smaller the distance, the more the attenuation is efficient in higher frequency. 
looking to the procedural difference produced by the primary source in presence or absence of control sources, interferences coming from the thrombone geometry are shown. This is an effect of diffraction. On the left, in low frequency, there is only no differences of pressure when there are speaker boxes until 1 kHz, while at 2 kHz on the right, there is a difference of until 40% at the back of the thrombone. But this work focuses only on the power attenuation in low frequency, where diffraction seems not to have impact. Hence, the power attenuation can easily be estimated by the use of transfer impedance matrices. Let's now have a look on the optimization of the power control. To do so, five cases are studied. Case 1, one control source is at 5 cm front of the primary source. Case 2, three sources are at 16 cm from the primary one equidistant on a ring. Case 3 is the combination of case 1 and case 2. Case 4, similar to case 2, but with 8 sources on the ring. And finally, case 5 corresponds to case 1 plus case 4. Here is shown the corresponding power attenuations for all the cases, beginning by case 1 with only one control source. Its resulting power attenuation is a straight line until 2 kHz. Adding the case 2 with three sources played further, we can see that the power attenuation for the first case is better in high frequency because the control source is placed closer to the primary one. However, the power attenuation is better in low frequency for case 2 due to the higher number of sources. Okay, the case 3 is like the case 2. There is not any improvement except a little increase in high frequency. The case 4 is a combination of the two layers of control sources that allow a control in a wider frequency range until 6 dB of power attenuation at 1 kHz. Finally, putting two layers uh, of sources with eight sources on the ring instead of three shows a small improvement. Um, so it's, com it's possible to see that the combination of ring of sources plus a source closer to the primary one brings a better power attenuation. Once we know that several layers can enhance the power attenuation, the simulation can be expanded with a challenge mode bullet to assess the feasibility, but with speakers available on the market. So this curve is an estimated volume velocity of the trombone uh, coming from a measurement of four notes, B0 flat, B1 flat, B2 flat, and B3 flat played at high intensity. Then the case with three sources on a ring plus one source plays closer to the primary run is studied. This second curve is the required volume velocity for one of the three sources placed on the circle ring. And the third curve is for the source on the axis. At this stage, the needed volume velocity for the last source is higher in high frequency. So the axis control source should have a resonance frequency around 1 kHz to control the high frequency range. The volume velocity needed for each source for this case is compared to available volume velocities of two different speakers. Let's compare the one of a speaker designed to be efficient in low frequency. So this BEMA volume velocity would be sufficient in low frequency for 3 watts. And let's finally compare another loudspeaker for the axis control source. Here it shows that the loudspeakers can be used as control source if it's supplied with 10 watts. It is thus possible to improve the power attenuation of the system by putting several layers of loudspeakers, but these ones must be tuned according to their frequency range of operation. In addition to the power attenuation, it is also interesting to be able to control the directivity of the system. The goal is now to make a control of the directivity in order to focus the sound towards a desired localization. Let's take the example of a musician who would like to hear the sound of his instrument louder. The directivity will then have to be adapted so that the sound will be louder only towards the musician. For this, the control source layer is shifted by a distance d on the x-axis, then a delay corresponding to the flight time between the primary source and the control one is added to the optimal volume velocity to achieve a cadre shape. The delay is tau equal d over c. So when a delay is added, the power attenuation becomes lower in low frequencies. There is an attenuation of 6 dB up to 250 Hz only. This is the result of the volume velocity calculation, which is not optimal anymore. But in that case, the directivity becomes cadre. 
as we can see here, the cardioid directivity allows to concentrate the energy towards the musician and thus permits to avoid as much as possible radiation in the room. So, uh, in the next figures, the axis of propagation of the trombone is at zero degrees, and uh, this shape works in low frequency, as we can see on the left, and less and less with the frequency, as we can see on the right, at, at 800 Hz, where the cardioid directivity disappears. But see the problem with this map. Here, the pressure attenuation is shown without directivity control. And we can see uh, an attenuation of 10 dB at 50 degrees, uh, up to 500 Hz compared to the axis of propagation. And we can also see that after 1 kHz, there is no attenuation anymore. No, there is an added delay to the optimal volume velocity. And so we have a cardioid shape uh, up to 1 kHz, which is the limit at kH equal n pi. So the pressure is more attenuated on axis and uh, the targeted shape disappears and the pressure is no more attenuated after. So to conclude, an optimal configuration for our case uses two groups of loudspeakers, a ring around the bell and a loudspeaker in front of the bell. Each group of loudspeakers need to be tuned to deliver the optimal volume velocity. The first group being used for low frequency and the second for higher frequencies. It has been shown that Adding a time delay uh, changes the directivity of the system, but reduces the power attenuation. A compromise has thus to be done between power and directivity control. In parallel, this study showed that the use of a beam model is not necessary to estimate the power attenuation, the effect of diffraction being negligible in the frequency range of the study. Then it will be necessary to optimize the choice of control loudspeakers for all the notes of a trombone and not only the B-flat notes. An experiment can be done to evaluate and compare the results of an active control with these simulations. And finally, other formalism can be used to achieve a better compromise between power and directivity control. Thank you for your